Hello, Gyronauts, and thank you for joining me for the January 2020 Most Valuable Podcast. I am your host, Tristan Gates. Let's get this started. So in this month's podcast, we'll be going over some player rating changes for January. Uh, we'll be going over some upcoming tournaments that Team MVP players are going to be participating in. We'll be going over some new MVP players, Team MVP players that uh, I know of. And then uh, we'll also be following up with uh, circuit events, uh, some featured YouTube videos that I found, um, a feature presentation uh, in regards to beginners and how... Uh, to teach them and what discs to use for them, um, a giveaway, and a special announcement at the end too. So stay tuned. So first up is our player ratings. Uh, I'll go down the list, and this is in uh, player number order, so no no favorites here or anything like that. First up we have Jeff Face, and as you can see, uh, I have some new graphics over there on the side. Um, let me know what you guys think or if there's anything else that you want to see specifically surrounding this. And as I continue going forward, I hope to have more and more graphics as we go. So first off, like I said, Jeff Face uh, is from San Francisco, California. He's the professional, uh, and he had a rating change of uh, dropping by one, going from a 10-11 to a 10-10. Uh, he participated in the Lake Chabot New Year's Classic, getting sixth place with round ratings of a 10-41, 9-59, and a 10-19, earning $145. Next up, we have Isaac Robinson. Isaac Robinson is from, from Snellville, Georgia. Uh, he is in the professional uh, classification as well, and he dropped two rating points uh, from a 10-12 to a 10-10. Uh, he participated at the Battle of Boomtown 2, uh, earning fourth place and had round ratings of a 990 and a 983, winning $100. Next up, we have Sias Elmore. Sias from Campbell, California. He is also a professional, and he actually went up a rating point uh, in January from 1018 to 1019. Sias participated in the Flyer Open 2, earning first place and having round ratings of a 1053, 1011, and 1020, earning $858. He also participated in the Lake Chabot New Year's Classic, too. Uh, and he ended up tied for third place uh, with round ratings of a 1004, 1005, and a... 1028 earning 215 dollars if you want to see sias coming up soon he will be participating in the 42nd annual wintertime open at the pro weekend which is a pro only a tier event from friday through sunday february 14th through the 16th uh, at oak grove which is uh, at hahamanga park in pasadena california next up we have uh medi bucarabilia uh from saint laurent blangy France. I'm saying it completely wrong. Apologize. Uh, he is a professional, and he went up two rating points uh, from a 975 to a 977. Medi participated in the Challenge IDF number two Open de Boy Le Roy, uh, earning first place and having round ratings of a 985 and a 985. He participated in the Regional Tour LFD HDF number one Annie, uh, earning first place and getting round ratings of a 999 and a 989. And then also got a challenge or participated in the challenge disc golf Isle de France three, uh, getting first place and having round ratings of a 976 and then another 976. If you want to see Medi coming up soon uh, and you're out in France area, um, he will be participating in the challenge LFD Isle de France number four at Sevron, which is a C tier on Sunday, January 26th. Um, in Sevran, France. I don't know what course that he might be playing at. If any of you guys happen to know, please leave a comment below and let everyone else know so that in the event they're in France and they want to check him out, he, they can. Next up, we have Todd Reagan. Todd Reagan is from Maryville, Tennessee. He is a professional, and he went from a 971 to an astounding 971. He didn't have any player rating change, but he did participate in two tournaments, the Premier Design Blue Monster Hybrid, get, earning eighth place, with round ratings of a 975 and a 957. Uh, he also participated in the 2019 end of the year flex start C tier, having a round rating of a 947 and coming in sixth place. If you wanna to see Todd coming up uh, in the near future, he'll actually be participating in a league from January 5th to February 9th in Knoxville, Tennessee, called the Winter Circle, sponsored by Pluto Sports. 
And then if you want to see him in his tournament capacity, you can go check him out at the Full Flight Disc Presents the Frozen Gnome 2, sponsored by Dynamic Discs, which is a B tier on Saturday, January 18th at the Sinks in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And will also be participating in the 2020 Knoxville Ice Bowl, which is a C tier on Saturday, January 25th, one week from the, the previous tournament, at Victor Ash Park uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee. Next up, moving right along, we have Brandon Oleski. Brandon lives in Oakland, Michigan, and ended up having a four-point rating drop from a 960 to a 956. Uh, he participated in the Cassius Benton, earning 16th place with round ratings of a 945 and a 929. Uh, next up, we have my personal favorite, and actually last for the rating changes, Alicia Troush. And I got it right this time, Alicia. Uh, she lives in Largo, Florida. Uh, she is an amateur, and she had a three-point rating increase from an 879 to an 882. She participated in the 2020 Tokobaga Games, earning second place with round ratings of an 889, 859, and an 899, which is really good. Um, I know that I said that I tried to get out and record some of that. I was not able to, so I do apologize about that. Um, there is a tournament coming up in the near future called Throw Down the Mountain that's happening down here in Florida, which I would like to get out and uh, get some of the pro weekend uh, where we might have like uh, Matt Dollar and I think uh, Sarah Hokum might be showing up and maybe a couple of others that I'm missing too. But back on the, to Alicia, um, she'll be participating in two tournaments coming up, the 19th Annual Southwest Florida Open, which is a B tier from Saturday to Sunday, January 25th to 26th in North Fort Myers Community Park in North Fort Myers, Florida, and then this is a long name, the 2020 Gulf, Gulf Coast Charity Open presented by the Brown Boxer Pub Smoke and Barrel Barbecue and Steakhouse. It is a pro B-tier uh, amateur A-tier tournament from Saturday to Sunday, February 15th to the 16th at Taylor Park and uh, Maximo Park and Picnic Island, uh, and those happen to be in Largo, Florida, uh, St. St. Clearwater, St. Pete area, excuse me, uh, and uh, South Tampa area. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to that one either, though I was signed up and had to cancel uh, for uh, reasons that I don't necessarily want to explain, but I did have to cancel that, and so I do wish her the best of luck in that tournament. Next up, we have players that are just participating in upcoming tournaments. Uh, they didn't have any rating changes in January, and again, this is filtered by uh, player ID uh, so if you feel like I'm, uh, casting favorites, I'm not, I apologize that these people are just at the top. Uh, first off, we have Graham Russell, uh, he lives in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, and Graham will be participating in the Maricopa Open, sponsored by Infinite Discs, which is a B tier on Saturday and Sunday, January 25th through the 26th, at Copper Sky Course in Maricopa, Arizona, and will also be participating in the third annual Lake Havasu City Open, which is a C tier on Saturday, February 1st in Sarah Park in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Next up, we have Brittany Zimmerman. Brittany is from Tucson, Arizona in the amateur uh, classification. Brittany will be also participating in the Maricopa Open sponsored by Infinite Discs. Again, B tier, Saturday, Sunday, uh, January 25th through the 26th at the Copper Sky Park in Maricopa, Arizona. And then also be participating in the Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Champion Discs, which is an A-tier tournament from Thursday to Sunday, February 20th to the 23rd at Wild Horse Golf Club in Henderson, Nevada. And I know that February 20th and 23rd is after when the ratings changes for next month, but I don't know when I'm going to be able to put out the video. And so I really still want you to be able to go out there and support Brittany as well as the other person that we have uh, participating in that tournament coming up in a minute. Next up, we have the infamous Sarah Hokum uh, from Caldwell, Idaho. Um, she will be participating in the Swamui Swine Classic 7 uh, Pros Division presented by Innova, which is an A tier from Friday to Sunday, January 31st to February 2nd at Samui Disc Golf in Mainam Kosami, Thailand. So if any of you guys happen to be in Thailand and watching this, which based on my analytics, nobody outside the Americans are watching this. Uh, feel free to go and, and uh, check out Sarah. She'll also be participating in a couple of tournaments shortly thereafter, but those I should be able to pick up for my next uh, podcast. Next up, we have Tyler Schrock. Tyler Schrock is from Kent, Washington, and he will be participating in the SeaTac Tree Smack 3, which is a pro and amateur, uh, excuse me, uh, advanced weekend B tier tournament Sunday, January 19th in the SeaTac Disc Golf Course in SeaTac, Washington. 
and also be participating in the Ice Bowl at White River, uh, which is a C-tier on Saturday, January 25th in White River, Auburn, Washington. Excuse me, at the White River course in Auburn, Washington. Next up, we have Mike Sully Sullivan. Uh, Mike will be participating, uh, excuse me, he's from Springfield, Virginia, and he'll be participating in the Brouhaha at Bluemont, sponsored by Dizzy Pig. That's actually a, a, a league, not a tournament, but um, that league is going from January 5th to February 23rd in Arlington, Virginia. And he will be participating in the Veterans for Vets Fisher House Fundraiser, which is an amateur only tournament, uh, C tier on Saturday, January 18th in Loreala Park in Spotsylvania, Virginia. And Mike, I don't know if you're watching this, but as a fellow veteran, I do appreciate the fact that you are supporting a fundraiser that uh, will help vets in one way or another. Next up, we have Daniel Brooks Wells. Daniel is from Whitehall, Pennsylvania, uh, and will be participating in the Hickory Run Hoot Nanny, which is a C tier on Saturday, February 8th in Whitehaven, Pennsylvania. I wasn't able to find out which course that's participating in, but if you reach out to Daniel on Facebook, I'm sure that he will be more than glad to let you know so that you can get out there and support him. Next up, we have Raven Newsom. Raven hails from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Raven will be participating in the Spike Heiser's Rock Ridge Rumble 7, a C tier on Saturday, February 15th uh, in Rock Ridge Park, Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Next up, we have, next up and last up, we have Aiden Gerthy. Aiden will be participating in the St. Cloud, or excuse me, <laughs> Aiden Gerthy is from St. Cloud, Minnesota, but we'll be participating in two tournaments, the 42nd Annual Wintertime Open Pro Weekend, which is a pro-only A tier Friday through Sunday, February 14th through the 16th at Oak Grove Park in Hahamanga Park in Pasadena, California. And he will also be participating in the Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Champion Discs, which is an A tier on Thursday through Sunday, February 20th to the 23rd at Wild Horse Golf Club in Henderson, Nevada. Next up, I'm really excited to announce uh, two brand new Team MVP players that I've actually played with one of them personally, and I'm really excited to announce this uh, on a podcast. They've already announced it on Facebook, so I feel like I'm okay to be able to say this, but uh, the TK Disc Golf Company, uh, founded by Taylor and Tyler Conkus, uh has two new team MVP players, Taylor and Tyler Conkus. Uh, they are, I've played with Taylor down here uh, just after the New Year's. Um, he's a great guy, um, makes uh, a couple of TK disc uh, golf discs. Um, they're, they're labeled with their stamp. I'll put a disc uh, somewhere on the screen uh, if you can see it. Um, be able to reach out to them on Facebook. Go follow their uh, Facebook group, uh, TK Disc Golf, and uh, just tell them uh, hey and congratulations and welcome to the family. Um, along with that, uh, we're going to jump into the MVP circuit events and and as you many well know, uh, MVP has announced the winter series circuit events um, that will be participating from February through April. Um, I'm only going to be announcing the ones that are in February. Uh, I'll announce the ones that are in March coming up uh, in the February podcast. But the very first one that I want to mention is actually hosted by TT Disc Golf. Um, and TD'd by, I believe Taylor is uh, uh, directing the tournament. It's called the MVP Winter Series Random Doubles, presented by TK Disc Golf, on February 15th in Monroe Community Park in Monroe, Ohio. Um, the next one that we have on the list is the MVP Winter Series Two Disc Challenge at Alex Clark, uh, which is on February 22nd, uh, Saturday, at Alex Clark Memorial in McKinney, Texas. Next up, we have the MVP Winter Circuit event. That's just the name of it. Um, on February 22nd as well in Taylor Disc Golf Course in Taylor, Alabama. Next up, we have the MVP Run the Chains Winter Series event, uh, which is on Sunday, February 23rd at Top of the Hill uh, Disc Golf Course in Canterbury, New Hampshire. And then lastly, the Laurel Lane MVP Circuit Winter Series 3 Disc Challenge on February 23rd at 2020. Um, I think this is a really interesting format that they put together there. Uh, I'll tell you the, the, the location in a second. Um, it is a three disc challenge. Um, and as we'll discuss here in a minute, um, the player's pack only comes with two discs. So what they've decided to do is allow, and both of them are putters, by the way. Um, so what they allow to do is uh, for every player to be able to pick a disc from their bag that they can use for the entirety of the tournament um, as a, an extra disc. So if you uh, have a really long hole and you need a driver, you're not stuck using just putters the entire way. So I think that was really interesting. Um, the Lower Lane MVP Circuit uh, Winter Series event will be hold, excuse me, hosted in Lower Lane Park in Reading, P 
Pennsylvania. Next up, I'd like to feature some uh, YouTube videos and you'll be able to see them uh, pop up as I mentioned them up in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Uh, first off, we have the Gatekeeper Media Group. Uh, for about five months ago or so, during the MVP Open, they uh, lo listed a video of the 2019 MVP Open Champion Doubles Skins match, uh, which has our very own Matt Dollar playing with James Conrad. So I do really encourage you guys to go out and watch that. I mean, there is Ricky Vaisaki and Paul Macbeth on there, which, okay. Um, but I do encourage you guys to, to go out and watch uh, Matt Dollar on that. Also with Gatekeeper Media, they are they just finished posting the 2019 Stafford Open, uh, which features Sarah Hokum, and I'm, I did I was able to finish watching it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, uh, but I would like to say congratulations, Sarah Hokum, on how well you did. Um, no spoilers. Uh, next up, we have the Smashbox TV interview uh, with Sarah Hokum, the 2019 Sarah Hokum interview. Um, I have not watched that, but I do encourage you guys to go out there and listen to what Sarah has to say. Um, and uh, support the uh, Smashbox TV group as well. And then last up, we have the MVP Disc Sports uh, group posting their video on the 2020 Winter Series. Next up, I want to start our, our feature presentation. And uh, we actually have I actually have th three different parts to this feature presentation. The first one is uh, a video from Facebook that I noticed um, that MVP posted. Uh, showing a brand new stabilizer prototype, which has a, a brand new day glow formula, which lasted glowing about three minutes or so. If I can show the video, I will uh, on the screen, but if not, you can find the, the description in the, uh, uh, the link in the description below. And I just really encourage you guys to, to look out for this stuff and to keep asking for it because I know that uh, a couple months ago I was asking about new. Uh, day glow discs because I really like the new Crave that just came out uh, in October. I really liked the uh, the stabilizer that came out um, recently, but some of the problems that I had with the other MVP discs that were glow was that only the outside rims would glow and no other part of it. And so while it kind of looks cool about a glowing disc floating through the air, um, the, the glow didn't last very long and it was very difficult to be able to find it once, once I threw it. So I kind of limited my day glow stuff to just the Crave and the stabilizer. But I really encourage you guys to go and keep asking for these during the soon day t things that uh, TK hosts on the Facebook, MVP Facebook page. And uh, keep asking for stuff like this and uh, hopefully more will come. Um, next up, I want to discuss the fact that we just rolled into the new decade uh, and the new year. We're in 2020 now, and as many of you guys know, New Year's is a time for resolutions. So I would love to hear in the comments below what your guys' New Year's resolutions are in relation to disc golf. Uh, I'll announce one of mine to you guys. Um, I am looking this year to host a winter, or excuse me, a, a circuit event um, sometime throughout the year. I attempted to host a, a winter event. Um, some things came up and I wasn't able to, so I actually had to delete that off of uh, the PDGA site, the MVP site, as well as uh, Facebook. But I do hope in the upcoming future I'll be able to host um, probably a non-sanctioned event um, during one of the probably three-disc uh, uh, player packs times. And uh, I'm actually really encouraged to host one for the youth, so anyone 18 and, old or and younger I'm trying to just get them into disc golf and get them into uh, the MVP brand specifically and, and uh, boosting up the MVP brand with, with brand new players. So next up on the uh, feature presentation, I want to go into uh, how to teach beginners. So first and foremost, going into the 2020 season, we're in the kind of the down season. Uh, some people are doing tournaments, as you saw, but there's not a whole lot of tournaments. There's no pro tour tournaments. And I just wanted to list to you guys um, some things that I use to teach some beginners uh, that I have on throwing off of the tee or maybe even uh, when they're out in the fairway, as well as throwing uh, putter shots when they're much closer, as well as some of the discs that I highly recommend that you guys uh, uh, recommend to those beginner players and sometimes why. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to start off with the discs and uh, what I was informed of when I was uh, asking about beginner discs, when I was trying to find out some discs for some of my friends, uh, the typical uh, answer that I heard was the ones that are tend to be understable. So they'll actually have a high or low, if you are a mathematician and understand negative numbers, um, a, a high turn, high negative turn, um, and a little bit lower of a fade. 
What this does is it helps them to get that easy S line that most pros would see without having to force their bodies into the Anheuser position on a more stable or overstable disc. So first off, I'm going to start off with putters because if you don't know, putters are what you should be throwing in, in holes that are less than 300 feet. I don't normally feel comfortable throwing putters and so I won't do it as often as I probably should. But I'm going to post four uh, putters on the screen and uh, explain them to you guys. So the first off we have is the Envy, uh, which is a three-speed, three-glide, zero-turn, two-fade. Uh, the Atom, which is a three-speed, three-glide, zero-turn, one-fade. The Pilot, which is a two-speed, five-glide, uh, minus one-turn, or one-fade. And then the Proxy, which is a three, three, negative one, and point five. Um, and what are the, the, the Envy, the Atom, and the Pilot tend to be the uh, typical discs that I see the people who appreciate one of the sections of MVP over the other, which ones they throw from those uh, sections. So if you're more inclined to Axiom discs, they tend to throw the Envy. If you're more inclined to MVP discs, they tend to throw the Atom. If you appreciate more the, uh, the Streamline discs, then you go with Team Squadron and end up throwing the Pilot. Now, personally, I've never thrown the Pilot, um, but I do have one, and for the next tournament, I do want to uh, get out there and start throwing it as well as practicing with it at home. Um, really, what I want you to, to encourage you guys with as beginners is uh, make sure that they understand that there's there's the different plastics that the MVP comes up with, the proton, the neutron, the electron, uh, and a couple of others that also are variations of that, like cosmic and stuff. Um, figure out what they like. Give them a proton, give them a neutron, give them a, an electron, and see how they feel with the discs, especially with the electron having the soft, the medium, and the firm uh, plastics, they might decide that they actually like uh, proton where you might like uh, the electron or vice versa or something along those lines. I think that for putters is uh, essential, especially when they're uh, close to the basket. You need to feel comfortable throwing what you are throwing. Um, the reason that I listed the proxy on here too is proxy is actually a really good disc off of the T when you need that Anheuser turn. So kind of like a 250 foot uh, dog leg right where you want to get around the corner, but it might be a really, really big dog leg and you don't feel comfortable throwing a, a forehand around the corner. Um, that would definitely help you get around that corner and fade out to where the basket is or underneath the basket. Next up, we have mid-ranges, and as any of you MVP players know, uh, the mid-ranges have gone more or less OOP for many of the uh, the brands, MVP, Axiom, and, and Streamline, um, but I have listed a couple here um, so that I can kind of uh, give you an example of things that you might want to look for while you're displaying some of these two uh, to your beginners. So first up we have the matrix. All of these are five speeds. Um, the matrix is a five, four, minus one, two. The vector is a five, four, zero, two. The pyro is a five, four, zero, two and a half. And the deflector is a five, three and a half, zero, four. So first off, I want to mention that the matrix probably is going to be the one that you want to give to your beginners. The only reason that I would recommend doing any of the other ones is for very select cases. For instance, the vector, maybe if they have a long straightaway that kind of fades to the left a little bit, you don't necessarily want them to uh, have a turn while they want their disc to go straight. And so I would recommend a vector in those instances for the beginners. Um, the pyro and the deflector are two that I listed on there, um, mainly because if you're trying to get them into forehand, a lot of beginners don't have the stability with a forehand that uh, many of the pros do, like maybe Sarah Hokum or Nate Sexton or something like that. So uh, having a more overstable disc for your forehands are going to be easier to not have that wobbly fade. And what I found is that the, the prism pyro and especially the deflector, when you're throwing it forehand, you will not get that wobble whatsoever. And sometimes maybe they even have a little bit stronger of an arm and they can actually do a really, really large uh, hyzer over top of some trees or something along those lines and those would be really good uh, discs that help them to stick it in the ground once they landed on the other side of those trees. But as far as what beginner is concerned, I'm probably not going to recommend anything other than a matrix or the vector in very select instances. Next up we have the fairways. Fairways are what I would really stick with when teaching beginners uh, for longer distance discs. Um, most of these are six and a half speed, except for uh, the first one. 
Um, we'll list them up there real quick. So first off, we have the relay, which is a 6, 5, negative 2, 1. A, the crave, which is 6, and a half, 5, negative 1, 1. The clash and the servo, which are 6 and a half. Uh, the clash is a 4 glide. The servo is a 5 glide, minus 1 and 2. Um, I recently gave a relay to uh, two of my good friends, and they actually asked me what disc it was so that they could go out and buy their own personal one because they loved how much it worked. When you teach them that they're supposed to be releasing with that flat line, then you end up getting them that Anheuser, uh, or excuse me, that really, really easy S line when they have that minus two turn one uh, fade, and they love it. They love seeing me able to get that distance on it. Um, what I would not recommend is teaching them forehand with a understable disc. Um, it's probably going to mess them up, especially the way that they're going to end up throwing forehands. But that is the disc that I've uh, seen the most beginners in my instances uh, pick up on really, really easily. Um, the Crave and the Clash are two that as they're getting their arms speed a little bit higher and a little bit better, or maybe they have a little bit faster of an arm speed that they can use to still get that S curve, but get a little bit more distance um, with the faster uh, profile. Um, the Clash, especially if they need it to uh, reliably fade back, or they have an issue with throwing a completely fat re flat release all the time, um, the Clash is going to end up fading back over, as well as the Servo is going to end up fading back over. Um, I didn't pick up a Clash recently, but I did pick up a Servo, and I am loving the way that it was thrown. I was able to throw it nearly 300 feet at the wrong basket uh, during a tournament that I was playing in this last weekend, uh, and it was it was amazing. I didn't realize that the basket was like 200 feet to the right. Um, I thought it was like 300 feet in front of us, and so I ripped it, and my partner didn't inform me that it was the wrong basket until after he had already parked it, and I was about 100 feet away. Um, next up, we're going to jump into drivers, and I do want to reiterate first and foremost so that don't end up teaching them that a higher speed is going to get them higher distances. Uh, many times, I'm able to throw a Crave just as far as I can throw an Envy. Um, and that's you know the difference between a, a three speed and a six and a half speed. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference either when they're nine speeds, especially when uh, if they're not throwing nine speed discs or they have an arm speed of about a six or a seven, they're not going to see the results that they expect from the numbers if you end up teaching them what the numbers are. But what I'm going to list up here is uh, some discs that I think might be uh, quintessential when they're getting better and they start getting a higher arm speed, they can see some of the different uh, profiles that they end up seeing from you being their professional friend uh, throwing. So first off, we have the Insanity, uh, 9, 5, minus 2, 1 and a half. The Lift, which is a 9, 5, minus 2, 1 and a half as well. Uh, the Virus, which is a 9, 5, minus 3 and a half, 1. And then the Tesla, which is a 9, 5, minus 1 and a 2. Um, I, I list the Insanity and the Lift both up there because A, they're both you know good discs with that uh, understable profile, but also n many beginners um, will end up actually going to something like Dick's Sporting Goods or something like that, a, a, a local sporting goods store, and they'll actually find discs that are mainly made by Innova. Well, Innova likes to have their, their, single, uh, their single mold, they don't have an overmold profile in Innova. Um, and so they might like the lift or, or like the feel of the lift better than the overmold of the Insanity, but the Insanity is going to do the exact same thing as what the lift does. Um, the next one, the Virus, uh, it is a wildly understable disc. Um, I have released it at an extreme hyzer angle off of the T, and it ended up getting flat. And I mean like extreme hyzer to flat. And if I end up throwing it anything more than extreme hyzer, I'll end up flipping it over much more often than I int intend to. Um, what this is going to allow you to do is uh, you're going to get that S turn for a beginner with a little bit higher arm speed a lot more reliably than you would from the Insanity or from the Lift. Um, but be warned, if they are uh, releasing on that flat angle, they might end up actually getting into a uh, backhand roller situation more often than they want to. And then the last one, the Tesla. Tesla is the quintessential uh, distance driver for pretty much every uh, MVP player that I know of. I personally don't throw the Tesla at all um, for the main reason that it hasn't worked for me the way that I think it's supposed to. Um, and also, uh, 
the ones that I have are the micro bubble, the fission technology. And, and I think it throws off the way that I'm uh, playing the game because it's a little bit different profile from the typical uh, plasma discs or uh, neutron discs that I end up throwing. But like I said, it is the quintessential disc. So I did want to list it on here for you guys. Um, the next part of the feature I wanted to mention was um, some ways to teach beginners on how to throw both longer distances and shorter distances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show up a video here and I'm going to uh, talk over it for a little bit. So the first and foremost thing that I end up doing is I try to teach the players where their foot position is because nine times out of ten they don't have the right foot position at all. They'll end up standing with their front foot uh, immediately in front of their back foot. And when you're trying to get that reach back, it's going to cause them to either reach in the wrong direction or it's going to cause them to reach around their body to try to get it at the same spot that, they're t that you're telling them to. So what I have them do is I have them separate out their foot to the one side and then I'll actually grab the disc from them as they reach back and I'll put it in the position that it should be in. And then after that, I'll tell them to rip the disc out of my hand. Uh, what that allows them to do is... Uh, a, build, build a little bit of arm strength while they're doing it, as well as consistently show them where their disc is supposed to be. And I'll do this three or four times per hole. Um, usually they're not throwing uh, great shots anyways, and so I have that ability to do that. Uh, and that leads me into the ability. Um, once they get to higher levels, I don't need to show them as often, and they end up actually putting the disc in the right place when they're going to throw off. Um, the next thing that I want to show you guys was some putting and what I end up doing is I actually teach them push putting um, In the event that you guys don't know push putting is when you're putting the effectively the disc against your chest uh, Like shown and you're actually pushing the disc into the basket rather than spinning the disc into the basket pushing the disc into the basket will uh, allow you to have a more consistent release, but you're also uh, not going to be blowing past the basket if you do miss it. So the first thing that I do is I have them put that at their chest. Um, when it's at their chest, I then tell them to reach out and handshake the basket. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to get their hand up and out the way that it's supposed to do, as well as it's going to show them where their hand is supposed to be when they release the disc. And hopefully if they are uh, listening to you correctly, they'll actually get it in the basket more often than not. Um, if they are outside of that 10 foot circle or sometimes maybe even the, tw the 15 foot circle, I'll just have them lay up and teach them that it might be easier to try to just run it a little bit um, with the push putt. And then when they get better, maybe they can turn into a spin putt or something along those lines. But push putting is a really, really good idea to teach beginners um, because they're going to end up trying to whip it into the basket uh, more often than you might imagine. So lastly here, what I want to show you guys is uh, our giveaway disc, and our giveaway for this month is actually two putters. So if you end up getting this, you can give one to your uh, beginner friend and show them exactly uh, how to push putt. And what they are are these two black pilots. Um, I'm rolling some B-roll footage of it for you right now. Uh, they're really nice. They have uh, One of them has a red to purple fade from left to right. The other one has an orange to red fade from left to right. And uh, if you end up winning these, uh, I will send one of your choice to you guys. Um, the purple to red is a 174 uh, weight. The red to, or excuse me, orange to red is a 175 weight in the event that that, that changes your guys' minds. Um, one thing I do want to uh, stress with this is that um, I do want you guys to comment below. Um, I would really appreciate the subscriptions. I really appreciate the likes, um, but I can't always tell... Uh, who is subscribing and who is liking. I can't tell at all who is liking uh, the videos, but I would, uh, can't necessarily tell uh, always who is subscribing. So if you end up leaving a comment below uh, with anything that I mentioned today, ways that you can teach uh, beginners or who your favorite uh, team MVP player is, or if you're going to be participating in any tournaments that people can show up to, uh, if you're going to be hosting any winter series events, anything like that, uh, leave in the comment below and you'll be automatically entered into the video and I will reach out to you guys uh, when we have uh, the drawing for that. I believe the drawing for it is going to be on the next video and I already have the next two months lined up for giveaways, so I'm really excited for that. And the last thing that I want to mention to you guys before I close out today is I have set up a Patreon account uh, for the Most Valuable Podcast. Now, I know a lot of times you guys don't like listening to me ramble, which is why I'm trying to put up more graphics and put up more videos and stuff like that. 
Um, but one thing I really, really do want to keep doing is doing these giveaways for you guys. And the giveaways uh, end up coming out of pocket and being a full-time uh, employee to a company as well as a father, as well as uh, a follower of Christ. My money ends up disappearing throughout the month and I don't even know where it goes half the time. Um, so I would love to encourage you guys to be able to sign up for the Patreon account. I will warn you guys that it is, uh, if you sign up for a tier, it is a month by month tier. So it's not a $1 uh, or $20 one-time fee unless you cancel after that one month. Um, but I would strongly encourage you guys to be able to sign up for that and take a look at some of the tiers. The $1 tier is is doesn't have a whole lot of say in it, but I will list your uh, name at the end of the video um, all the way up to the $20 tier, which I don't currently have it set up right now, but I am working with a local artist to set up a stamp that I can submit to MVP and I can get some MVP discs with my stamp on it. Um, so I'm really excited about that and I'm uh, anticipating uh, what that's going to look like in the coming future. So. Please, please go on there. Uh, show your support. Um, I'm not asking you guys. I'm not telling you guys to go sign up. Excuse me, um, but it would really help me out uh, being able to get some of these uh, giveaways for you guys and to be able to uh, give away more stuff maybe in each video. So I am your host Tristan Gates, and I appreciate you guys sitting on with me and listening to me ramble. And I am going to let you guys go. Happy putting. Peace out. Peace.